Welcome all to uh, this YouTube channel of Signs, Planets, and Stellar Rhythms. I am your host and shamanic astrologer, Eric Roth, and I'm here for another episode of this uh, continuing series, uh, astrologically looking at all of the various alignments and uh, planetary ingresses and Different um, different aspects of astrology as they as they show up throughout um, each year, and there's this is definitely a uh, uh, a really prominent month here in December of 2021, um, and this episode is actually focused on a particular alignment that carries into 2022 and has been a, a major theme in this, uh, in this uh, at the year of this recording of 2021. So I'm gonna be diving into that here and, and showing a lot of visuals about this particular alignment that's coming up here, right around at least the particular aspect of it is right around uh, the Christmas holiday. So um, I welcome again, welcome all to, to this. And uh, if once you're done, please like or subscribe. Uh, this helps me get an understanding of what uh, people love to see more of or what they don't like to see and to put more of that into uh, into the pot of the YouTube channel that is of interest to uh, all of you out there that uh, are into astrology and or are curious about it. Okay, this is the 29th episode of Science, Planets, and Stellar Rhythms. And... We're going to be talking about the upcoming Saturn Uranus square. So this this episode is solely focused on not just this one day that's coming up on December 23rd, but focused on the entire breadth of this Saturn Uranus square theme that has been going on throughout 2021 and um, in parts of 2022 as well. So you'll see why uh, that is going to be really important going into next year or what I'm going to share about that. All right. So uh, what here is the, the major things. We're going to talk about what a square is in astrology for those of you, especially that are new to astrology and like, oh, what is this square all about? What is the square? Talking about the Uranus Saturn squares and also alignments, other alignments or aspects. And then how does the Saturn Uranus square impact us? And then talking about how it also is part of 2022. So this is, uh, this is the big presentation here going forward. Um, like just to take a moment here for everyone, just take a, take a breath and invite in your guides and uh, you know, the, the wisdom and the knowledge uh, of Saturn and Uranus and uh, Gaia or Mother Earth into into this uh, into this watching into this uh, presentation uh, to help guide you through what is going to be shared here in the next uh, uh, several minutes up to oh, maybe a little more than a half an hour. All right. So what is a square? So for those of you new to astrology, um, uh, a square is a ninety degree aspect, and it can really be seen very uh, prominently in the sky every month, uh, twice a month, actually you get a f uh, with the moon, a first quarter and a last quarter moon phase. That is essentially a square. And you can see by the diagram here um, with the sun setting here in the west and uh, the moon here are roughly 90 degrees from uh, the sun. Again, this is just a uh, symbolic representation of, of how that could look in the sky. I uh, granted it's on a much larger scale when you're outside and looking at that. But when you see those first and last quarter moons, whether they be you know the waxing first quarter, the waning uh, last quarter, means the moonlight is decreasing in the last quarter and the moonlight is increasing in the first quarter, you get an idea of the aspect of when astrologers talk about squares and what that what that really means in their presentations. So, what is a square in astrology? Well, this is a it's it's considered what we call a hard aspect. So there are three quote hard aspects, 
conjunctions, oppositions, and squares. And a square is a 90 degree aspect between two celestial bodies or points. Typically along the ecliptic is where it's seen, seen the most. Um, but there are of course other aspects in astrology we're gonna be, but we're gonna be focused primarily on uh, squares in this video, in this webinar. So in shamanic astrology, we also look at hard aspects, including squares, as dynamic because it's something that moves the energy. It's something that helps push the energy forward, whether it be in ourselves, whether we're in a particular initiation in our lives, it's, uh, or if it's in society and it's going through a particular important square, there's a, uh, a tension that's built up in that. In fact, I would say a square... When it comes to when it comes to challenge and tension, uh, the squares tend to be slightly more than, say, a conjunction. And opposition kind of is a little bit in the same realm, but it's it's much more about the focus and illumination of the issues. For a square, it does highlight it, but it kind of pushes the energy really. Uh, it's like a rough go uh, when it's think about two walls leaning up against each other and eventually something's got to give something will will give either one wall will fall first and then the the second one but this you know it's all about the decisions that need to be made action need to be taken in that regard um, and then some astrologers look at the first square and then there's a last square well just like the moon the first quarter uh, moon and the last quarter moon and there's subtle differences between the first and the last. So I'm not going to get into all of that. I would make for an extra long video here. But know that the con conjunctions, oppositions, and squares have a lot of similar vibrations, except that they, you know, when they're weighed against each other, they have somewhat different, uh, you know, uh, things that they're, that they're helping a person bring up, depending on what is being aspected in that regards. So square shows that something has to give, meaning one direction or another, something must be faced. Our experiences come alive in the inner and outer worlds with a square. And that can be, again, uh, you know, with conjunctions and oppositions, there's some similar, it's just in the similar same category, if you will. Uh, but it all depends on what is being uh, activated right there, you know, depending on how the squares, opposition, conjunctions uh, share themselves with the world. Okay, so since we're talking about Saturn Uranus, let's just define what this means. And for those of you that are new to astrology and or, uh, you know, want to know more about this, this is just a brief explanation of Saturn Uranus. Saturn is a, a planet that symbolizes the middle realm, the realm of reality, form, function, systems, structures, rules, laws, growth through limits and boundaries. So it, it, it assists us in recognizing the gravity of a situation, but also enabling us to plant the seeds for uh, to sow in the long-term future. In its shadow, it can become the sacrificial goat bearing our sins until it comes around again, which it always does. So it's important for us to deal with it when we get that opportunity to show up um, and to invest in ourselves and our, in our future as it shows up in our lives. Now Uranus is uh, like uh, Neptune is kind of an antithesis to or counterpoint to what Saturn brings into the reality. Uranus brings in what we call the celestial realm, the realm of the divine, uh, spirituality and kind of out there beyond linear time. Whereas in the case of Saturn, it's also considered the Lord of time. And so uh, Saturn can, it, it gives us an understanding of, of the linear things that we need to do in order to get from A to B and cause and effect type of situations. For Uranus, it's not quite like that. It's nonlinear. So it happens in times where it's completely unpredictable. It gives us an initiation of unexpected events of great novelty, also breakthroughs and, and a sense of a revolutionary spirit and innovation. Um, whereas Saturn has more of a resonance with the sign of Capricorn, although traditionally it was Capricorn and Aquarius as well. For Uranus, it's much more in the realm of, of or the, the sign that it's resonant with as Aquarius. So um, it has an extreme, like whereas, the um, 
uh, Saturn is much more about you know, getting things done and taking action to, to make things happen. Uranus is more extreme and, and more dramatic in that way. It tends to help break things apart, whether it be traditional structures and things that no longer, uh, that have completed their, their time and or they're fading out. And so Uranus can, can bust through the gates, if you will. It's a, I like it as um, lightning in a bottle. Uh, in fact, Daniel G. Mario, creative shamanic astrology tends to think of a Uranus initiation as uh, lightning striking in our lives. He says in a, in, a, in a good way. Well, it could really show up in our, it all depends on our perception of how we view whatever events that are coming in, whether it be a Saturn or Uranus initiation. And the case of this, what I'm talking about in this theme, it's both Saturn and Uranus at the same time. And so this is a, for makes for a very bizarre, you know, alignment between these two worlds here. Uh, bizarre meaning that, okay, they have very different instructions. And so where will they be in, in astrological uh, or zodiacal sign here? Well, Saturn will be in Aquarius and Uranus is in Taurus. Uh, Aquarius is the avant-garde of knowledge, visionary, brilliant, innovative, uh, independent. Uh, it's a direct access to cosmic consciousness and tends to want to expand consciousness to its highest level and help us break down barriers and be adaptive objective um, and promote tends to have a, a you know idealistic uh, view you know promoting uh, to some degree you know one can one view would be universal love of course the sort of the flip side of that would be for Aquarius would be the being overly detached uh, denial of the shadow I've actually met someone and when I was doing um, uh, some readings at a fair where that person completely denied that there, there's no such thing as a shadow. And it was really interesting. And he had some strong Aquarius on his chart. So that was a really interesting um, uh, conversation or dialogue there. Um, and Aquarius can have a lack of empathy um, and tends to uh, not engage in personal relationships except as an experiment um, and can become kind of a hermit type of thinker. So uh, it's more up in the mind, in consciousness, that is Aquarius. And that's where Saturn is. And Saturn is trying to bring that into form and function. So innovation into form and function. Uh, detachment from, from the world into form and function. So it's, it's really kind of an odd couple that's, that's getting together. Although traditionally, they were seen in the same vein. They were connected, um, uh, the, the sign and the planet. Taurus, on the other hand, is where Uranus is located. It, Taurus is the essence of that is, 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 is knowing the self through the body, through the art of pleasures, beauty, aesthetics, and, and doing it thoroughly. It has a physical, artistic nature, honors earth for its bounty. It's about receiving and um, really receiving and truly giving uh, the uh, giver uh, the honor of giving to them, meaning that they're honoring the, the, the gift itself. And so that there's an exchange of energy in that just from that um, particular transaction. Um, the Garden of Earthly Delight is uh, really uh, powerfully symbolic of uh, Taurus. Uh, so of course, on the flip side of, of Taurus is, can be narcissism and vanity, addicted to the material realm, pleasures and comforts, a certain stubbornness that can come through and unable to see the depths of what it's doing. I mean, it's, it's too much on the surface and not able to go underneath it where, where the deeper waters are to, uh, to see the depth of, 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 of a person's issues or the reality of events going beyond, beyond the surface. So, and also lack of motivation or just uh, stuck in wanting to have security in their life and protecting all those pleasures and comforts. And that's where it can lead to uh, uh, more materialistic nature, including with food and other kinds of, of pleasures. Okay, so Uranus is there. So Uranus is trying to um, help us understand uh, what we might be missing and uh, a feeling around uh, Taurus, so giving us breakthroughs and experiencing, hey, are we addicted to uh, these all these conveniences in the modern world? 
uh, whether it be, ha you know, being able to push a button and having whatever we want uh, here, like in the United States and Europe and various countries, you can just click and, and the object or the food will appear uh, sometimes within an, hour, within an hour or so or less or uh, just a day or two and you get it. Um, and have we reached a maximum of that, you know, at this particular age? And maybe that that's part of what we're experiencing here is the breakdown of that. So Uranus is teaching us the, from the celestial perspective, like, hey, wait a minute, have we gone too far? And we need to break through into a different type of paradigm with that. Um, maybe a new way of experiencing pleasures and comforts and um, uh, the beauty of the world and the beauty of the earth in particular. I think that there's certainly a, uh, a a lot of commentary with Uranus and the uh, current uh, Earth crisis that we're having with with uh, climate change, um, and so Uranus and Taurus is giving us a a piece of this here, and so combined with Saturn, that's creating dialogue uh, that has will have unexpected results um, and has had unexpected results in 2021 and now going into 2022. So you know, buckle your seatbelts for that. All right, so let's look at what happened previous alignments between Saturn and Uranus, as well as ones coming up in future. And again, these are hard aspects or dynamic aspects. Um, here's the highlighted one, 2021 to 2022, Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus. Now, what's interesting is the last time they had a square was in 99, 1999 and 2000. Saturn was in Taurus, where Uranus is now. And Uranus was in Aquarius, where Saturn is now. So they've flipped the script. And uh, they're each getting a chance of, of, of connecting with the signs that they were in prior while being also in a square. And they have, Saturn and Uranus have um, uh, hard aspects about every eight to 11 years. And again, this can vary because of retrograde uh, patterns of these two planets and how sometimes they're not quite as in sync as it would otherwise be. Um, but I found that all the squares that I mean, from, from the 1970s to uh, the 2040s, which is the, the next set of squares coming up, uh, are all in the signs of where uh, traditional astrology calls fixed signs. And in shamanic astrology, we call the, the um, signs of self-interest or self-exploration. These are Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, and Aquarius. And so all those squares are happening in that pattern. So that pattern goes through certain incarnations. And prior to the 1970s, the pattern changed into uh, what we call the householder or the, um, uh, the cardinal signs in, in traditional astrology. So they, they switch over time, kind of like with the pattern that that Saturn and Jupiter have when they go through uh, conjunctions every 20 years. And then they do this over a few centuries where they are in a particular element, you know, whether it be, um, you know, moving into the element of, of air in this game, in, in this time, um, and then prior to that in, in Earth. So that was that transition that we were just experiencing with Saturn and Jupiter. We're in that period right now. All right, so um, December 23rd, the third and final exact square. Um, and there's a fourth one that almost happens in the latter part of 2022, which I'll, I'll get into here uh, shortly. But Saturn and Uranus have their last square here on December 23rd of this year, 2021. And it's not just that these square, it's like, oh, you gotta worry about or, or concern yourself or, be a part of just only that particular day. It's really the theme of the whole year because we're dealing with outer planets and they move slowly. And so the whole month or most of, uh, you know, half of, sorry, half of December of 2021, they're within one degree of each other of the square and in the buildup and point of connection. And then there's a release. So it's not just like December 23rd, it falls right in the middle of that roughly two week period, there's also the release of that energy. But what's fascinating about this is that because of the pattern, 
we, they are, these two planets are within 10 degrees for over, 10, for over two years. So from November 23rd, 2020 to January 23rd, 2023, they are within 10 degrees of a square. So you can see that we're big, we've been in the, uh, in the zone uh, of this particular alignment really strongly. And that will continue on throughout 2022. Um, and so be prepared for just an awareness of things developing beyond just the December 23rd date, that during Christmas and up into the new year, you're getting in that one degree zone. And why I use 10 degrees? Now, uh, Richard Tarnas, an, an astrologer and, and researcher who's a philosopher, has written some good books about an incorporated astrology in his work. There's a book called Cosmos and Psyche that writes about uh, these kinds of aspects, these hard aspects. And he uses 10 and 15 degrees for measuring understanding of events, world events in, in Earth's history, especially in the context of, of humanity. And so um, from a shamanic perspective and an experiential perspective, you look at the sky, if you see something, two planets or two points within 10 degrees, they look pretty darn close together. So they are, you know, from a shamanic perspective, at least in this system that I work with shamanic astrology, it's considered conjunct, um, not, you know, the exact conjunctions are within the one degree, but it's, it's right there. So if you extend your arm out the closed hand or fist, and um, you look at where the distance between the two bodies, say perhaps the moon and a star or a planet, uh, and if they kind of on the edge of those two knuckles there, then they're roughly within 10 degrees or right about 10 degrees, or maybe just outside at around 11 degrees. It's in that zone where it's like, oh, these, this is happening. There's, a, there's, a, there's an alignment taking place here. So that's why the, uh, the 10 degrees in, uh, is utilized a lot. And um, in uh, Richard Tarnas's research, you can see why he extended it because of the, uh, the sheer amount of, of evidence that he collects with his, all of the research that he did for that particular book. Okay, so some history here and some previous dates of, of the Saturn Uranus squares, which uh, the last two Saturn Uranus squares in 2021 took place February 17th, uh, 713 Aquarius Taurus, June 14th at 1306 Aquarius Taurus. And then of course, coming up here, December 23rd at 11 degrees 05 uh, minutes of Aquarius and Taurus. So Saturn, Aquarius, Uranus and Taurus. And then there's nearly a fourth one um, between September 15th and October 23rd of 2022. So it's in that zone. I have a, a chart I'm gonna show you about that, what that looks like. So in, uh, we go back to, this is a kind of harking back to uh, the connection to 2020 um, and Jupiter, Saturn and uh, Pluto were in conjunction or in alignment. They were dancing around each other for the vast majority of 2020 and uh, briefly into the early part of 2021 as well, into January of, that, of this year. So 1285-26, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto were also at that time in opposition to Uranus. Um, that means that there's alignment. So like Uranus was in the early degrees of Taurus, roughly during the time of the Saturn, Jupiter, um, uh, Pluto conjunction 2020. And it's squared at a rough square of the planets in the latter degrees of Capricorn and into the, uh, when, especially with Saturn in the early degrees of Aquarius in 2020. So there's a, there's a connection there between that period and this period. Um, Saturn is spending its first, in 2021, it spent, it spent its first full year in the sign of Aquarius with, with Jupiter for the first time since 1405. And the overall pattern of 2020, 2020, 2020 and 2021 uh, more closely resembles the 1285 to 86 when Jupiter and Saturn began to transition also from Capricorn to Aquarius. And Pluto was in conjunction with those planets back in 1285. So there's, that was the, uh, there's a whole video that I do about um, 
uh, the coming of 2020 and No Easy Way Through that was recorded three years prior to that, uh, actually over three years prior to that. Um, see, oh, it was at the end, sorry, it was at the end of 2017, so more than two years prior to uh, uh, 2020. And I would definitely point you in that direction to maybe some, and some other videos that reference that time period as well. Uh, so, so here we have, you know, part of that setup. It, it, it's like we're, we're reaching a whole different level, a whole different octave of what was going on. I mean, that was the, the time period at the end of the Crusades uh, was starting to, 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 to fade off and the uh, humanity was going through some absolutely massive changes, especially the decade that came right after that. So an end of one age and, and the beginning of a new. Okay, so Saturn Uranus square continues in 2022. Here's the, uh, the chart alignment. We can see Uranus and Saturn here in this, uh, in this graphic. Um, so in the wake of the uh, collective events of 2020 and 2021, there's a potential for the unveiling of diamonds in the rough. Um, we are painstakingly discovering what could give us a chance for long-term solutions to problems that have existed for decades and in some cases centuries. Uh, the fallout of this crisis uh, is only now becoming uh, more evident. Um, so as we get deeper into it and what, you know, not just, not just the pandemic, that was a, a big part of it uh, that continues on and is evolving on its own. Um, is all the, the transformation that the world is uh, uh, trying to work with, with uh, authoritarian governments, economic uh, ups and downs, um, you know, what is, who, who are we, human rights, social, social justice, uh, and especially climate change. This is, I think, the number one, by far the number one issue that we face as far as like, hey, this is an existential issue here. Um, so more, more to come from that. Uh, the intent of Uranus and Saturn could educate humanity the value of changing the way we live in our relationships with each other and with Earth. So infrastructure technology, including how we entertain ourselves. I was talking about the Taurus and the, you know, the addictions to materialism and convenience and, you know, all of that sort of that uh, the realm of, of pleasure, like, oh, we, a reality, and I can understand, reality is so hard to deal with that we want to entertain ourselves, we want to go and, and, and see a different, uh, a fantasy and a different kind of reality. Um, but here's where the Mother Earth is, is, you know, initiating us into her ways and saying, hey, wake up, this, these things are changing. We need to, we need to address this and, and work with this. And, and this is what I feel like the one thing that's gonna, if there's any one thing on this planet that can really bring us together is, it is the, it is the earth. It is the environmental uh, situation because we're all gonna be impacted no matter what we're doing or where we are. There's gonna be some impact uh, on, uh, in, in each place. Um, okay, so the uh, how we how we acquire the resources to create the infrastructure, um, you know the how we do trade, you know from overseas in various countries, um, uh, from you know how many boats we have out there, how many planes, the mining, the uh, you know the management of the forests and the extreme changes that were going on weather-wise and, and of course interrupted by, you know, a, a viral pandemic, you know, this is, all of these things are coming up all at once and it can be overwhelming. And so Seattle and Uranus are here to teach us about working with them and through new ideas, new techniques, as well as just the, in the Iranian case, the awareness and maybe potentially having breakthroughs with, technology, but technology that is in harmony and in resonance and helps can actually be a benefit to earth and to humanity at the same time, where it isn't just like going off and establishing technology because we can, but because it's, it's something that is absolutely needed uh, for um, really to some degree our survival, but also to help 
uh, assist the earth and bringing things back into balance. So the things that can be beneficial for us and bettering for all life. All right, so um, here is some, another piece of the Saturn Uranus square, and this involves Vesta. And Vesta through 2022 is gonna be spending a lot of time in Aquarius and a little bit, and to some degree also in Pisces, so it's gonna be dancing between that. And it, when it reaches an opposition with the sun, Vesta does, it's an asteroid. Um, this is happening on August 22nd, 2022. And we can see that Saturn and Uranus are only about six degrees away from each other here. Uh, seven, it's like maybe seven degrees away. So they have, they have their own particular uh, dance that they do. And in fact, they talk a lot about this um, in my video about Vesta and Virgo that I did um, about a year ago. I definitely would point you to learn more about that and or even read the book that I wrote about Vesta called Sacred Hearth Within. But this is going to be, Vesta is going to be playing a, a, a role in Saturn's expression in its uh, square with Uranus uh, due to its interaction with, with going over uh, into Aquarius. So now Vesta will be kind of on the edge of visibility in August. So you have to be under really perfectly dark skies to be able to see it um, and have keen eyesight. Uh, but for most of us, we may not see it. Uh, again, this is where, this is an example of where it would be in the sky. And Saturn will be at the tail of the goatfish with the stars of the Nabal Jetty and the Shira. And that is uh, certainly a, a powerful uh, a part of the sky as well. It, it represents uh, transition and earth and water and our own ability to adapt to, to changing conditions and for Saturn bringing that into, into form. Um, and uh, one of the things interesting is that where Saturn is at that point, conjunct the Shira, uh, that is a, a star that uh, has traditionally been seen as the fortunate one or the lucky star. And uh, the Nebel Jetty being the, uh, at the end of the tail there, um, representing that tail, representing that connection to the water, uh, to the water zone where it's, the cosmic waters are being poured into, into, the, into the cosmos uh, and down onto the earth uh, of knowledge and wisdom. And so it's like you can think of the tail as, as helping to pick that up. You, you might say, bringing that forward. So Saturn is, is getting into that territory into, uh, in 2022 with Vesta. And Vesta is with Fomalhaut as well. There's a, another powerful star, both the Nebel Jetty, uh, you know, is a magical, considered a magical star. And then Fomalhaut is one of the royal, uh, four royal stars. And that's a star you'll be relatively easy to see uh, in um, uh, that time of year in the summertime uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere. And there would be, of course, a winter in the uh, Southern Hemisphere there. Uh, what else here? So here is where uh, there is a conjunction between Best and Saturn at 24, 35 Aquarius. So right in that tail of the goatfish area, but again, Best is, is farther south of the ecliptic. So it's not quite right in that zone. It's below that zone, more in the, in the watery area. Vesta is the daughter of Saturn. And Saturn and Vesta have a regular rhythm that they repeat a lot over, I mean, over and over, just like what other planets do. But in these two, like Vesta has the closest rhythm um, with Saturn than any other in the sky. And they will be, in 2022, Vesta and Saturn will be within uh, 10 degrees of each other uh, twice, between April 6th and June 16th. 2022, and then August 13th and November 17th of 2022. And uh, Vesta in the sign of Aquarius from March 10th through May 24th, and then August 21 through November 20th, all in 2022. And so um, the middle of that, the period of, of retrograde is always the opposition with the sun for these outer planets and anything um, orbiting outside, you know, on the other side of Earth. Um, Vesta has an opposition with the sun at 2939 Aquarius. That's always the middle of the retrograde period. Okay, so this is, this is another uh, a piece of this. There's, there's a couple of things that involve 
Uh, one involves more, more involves Vesta, and, the, and this one doesn't involve Vesta as much. The second graph, the seventh graphic I'm going to share does definitely involve Vesta. But here is uh, a, a symbol. Uh, now, Saturn and Uranus aren't in, um, they're about four degrees from a exact square. So they're still in the range, but we can see here the North Node and Mars all in Taurus, squaring Mercury and Leo and, and Saturn in Uranus, Saturn in Aquarius. Um, this, this, this time period is definitely a time to be aware of to, you know, that that could be some really, uh, or could be a wild period uh, for humanity uh, between July 18th and August 16th with the concentration of uh, July 27 to August 11th. And then sort of the center of that would be July 31st. So you have this really, I think a wild period of potentially breakthroughs and breakdowns at the same time with some, uh, powerful innovations and ideas being coming forth and meaning that something that may occur that maybe get lost in the headlines that may end up helping humanity, uh, you know, seeding something for the long-term future around that time uh, because of that, because of Mars coming in, activating like, a, like flipping a switch that has, and this is where the North Node comes in, has to do with our future, has to do with uh, the, our, our future direction you know, uh, a future self, meaning the humanity self going forward out there in the universe. And in this case, obviously uh, here on this planet. All right, and then the last uh, slide I wanted to bring in in this presentation is um, the uh, October 10th, which is not quite the middle of the period between September 15th and October 23rd, but it is, this is in 2022, but it is a point where the Saturn and Uranus are, roughly at their closest point in the square, about two thirds of one degree from exact. And in this space, we see Uranus again, still hanging around the North Node at that time, only four and a half degrees away. And then Saturn, here, is it, here it is with, with Vesta. So there's something I think really profound during the, that, that could take place during this time between uh, mid-September and late October that could help us uh, when it comes to our future, that could help us uh, when it comes to our consciousness and uh, ideas and even technology and done in a more sacred way, done in something that can actually be a benefit to humanity. So something to, to, to prepare for us. I think that there's an intent for all of this to come forth. Now, it's not, I'm not talking about predictions here, but it's an, it, this whole thing is about, about intent. And we also, human beings are, one of the most famous qualities we have is resisting and resisting change, resisting sometimes ideas that make, might make us uncomfortable at first, that, but could end up benefiting us in, in the long run. And this, this points to, all that it's going on, not just in the United States, but all over the world. Uh, I, and I'm sharing this video also, I'm not trying to ignore this, this is definitely gonna be part of a separate, a couple of other videos, that the US, the United States is in a Pluto return. And we gotta understand certainly that in, in all of this that I'm talking about with Saturn Uranus, that the United States in particular is going through a death rebirth process and uh, 2022 is the center of that death rebirth process. Um, at the same time, humanity is experiencing a um, turning of the ages. So we're moving from one age and at the end of a Kali Yuga into, uh, into a transitionary period uh, after 2025. So that's a, that's a whole different topic, but I, I wanted to share this in the context of all uh, that I've, I've shared about Saturn and Uranus. Well, thank you all for, for watching this. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Um, you can find more information about uh, me and what I do on inspiralnexus.com, as well as uh, my work with Kaylin Castell, uh, talking about uh, star magic and alchemy, uh, inspired by shamanic astrology at mystaralchemy.com. And of course, the root of, the, of my own educational process uh, began with Daniel G. Mario on the Shamanic Astrology Paradigm, and which you can find at shamanicastrology.com. 
and I do readings, classes, events, astrophotography, and more. Uh, and I'm also in the process of creating a podcast called Rhythm of the Stars. So be on the lookout for that too. Um, I do uh, newsletters that I send out um, once or twice a month. So be, you know, feel free to subscribe to that um, through inspiralnexus.com. And thank you all and have a, a very peaceful rest of your day and week. And I look forward to um, doing the next uh, set of videos in the near future. Be well, everyone.